Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today I wanted to talk about Star Citizen Alpha 3.0 and its features in detail, what it means for the game, its target release dates, and anything else we know about it. 3.0 represents possibly the most major milestone for Star Citizen and tangible gameplay for its persistent universe. There is a huge amount of new content and massive changes, um, as well as lots of stuff going on with the back end too. And let's kind of just jump in. Target release dates. So Star Citizen Alpha 3.0 has some targeted release dates. Um, its current plan is that it may go to an Evocati PTU as early as the 5th of June and a live release as early as the 29th. These are target dates from CIG and Foundry 42's internal schedules, so they will change, but uh, we will be kept up to date via robertspaceindustries.com schedule dash report every Friday with blockers encountered, delays, and progress made. It's also worth mentioning sometimes um, more features will make it into a patch, or some might get removed if they encounter a more long-term unfixable issue in the shorter term. Um, Let's talk about some of the larger gameplay features first, though, with planetary, um, planetary in inverted commas, uh, landings with moons. While not being planets, there are a selection of moons and bodies to explore. You'll be able to enter the atmosphere of these astral bodies, if they have one, um, exploring and landing on the planetary body. Um, these areas will have interesting things to do and explore. Surface outposts, for example, that we've been hearing about a lot recently. Um, you're about to find them on moon surfaces, as well as part of mission locations. There's going to be um, these surface outposts in lots of different configurations um, to be able to loot. Um, you're also going to see derelict ships to discover, like the Javelin, um, whether that be on space or on the ground, and you'll see accompanying debris fields in certain situations in space. But they've got planetary physics um, grids locked down to support orbiting and rotating planets too. Um, but let's talk more about the planets in a bit of detail. Yella. Yella is the most frigid of Crusader's moons. Those bold or careless enough to step outside without a spacesuit will be killed instantly by its freezing temperatures. If the cold doesn't kill you, then one of the treacherous crevices that crisscross the planet might. Cry volcanoes have been known to erupt unexpectedly from such crevasses, so be wary when flying at low altitudes. Despite all its danger, there is much beauty to be found on Yella, like underwater caves hidden beneath the moon's crust. Selin. Burning with volcanic activity, Selin is a counter to her icy sister. Although the volcanoes have been dormant for hundreds of years, the surface is dotted with thermal geysers that erupt without notice. The largest of such geysers can destroy heavy vehicles. Highly corrosive clouds of gas are regularly released from the moon's surface, creating low visibility and damaging anything caught on the outside. Daymar. Daymar's service is harmonic blend of Yella and Selin. Its mountainous service is reminiscent of Selin's volcanoes, while its craters share a warm likeness to Yella's frozen crevasses. Known for its dense atmosphere, thick fog, and loose dirt surface, making its travel difficult, lightning storms can help illuminate the fog, just don't get struck by their flash. So that's the kind of moons that we'll be seeing, but there's also the possibility of selling Delamar, uh, which is the Levski landing zone and its accompanying um, large asteroid that it's housed on. The Delmar and Levski landing zone, um, shown in the 2016 Gamescom camo, will be in 3.0 if they finish it in time. Otherwise, it will probably get pushed to 3.1. Um, this would be great to get a hero landing zone in 3.0. Expect other bits and pieces in the verse to revamps of stations, more points of interest um, in space to discover, and lots of visually pleasing space travels. But it is also going to have a good amount of locations to buy and sell items for as well. The size of moons um, is going to be quite large in scope as well. It takes about four and a half hours to circumvent Selen in a dragonfly at full speed, full burn, or 12 days of walking. 12 and a half days, in fact. Um, you can stand on a moon as it rotates on its axis and watch the sun rise and fall too. So there's a lot of functionality there. Character customization is also in 3.0. Players will now be able to customize their heads, hair, eye color, and skin color. And it's possible that we might see a female character here too if it's ready. But character customization is a massive step in player expression currently missing from Star Citizen. We did see the three lateral database of heads and their early customization of faces, but we won't know exactly what functionality we're going to get from character customization in a 3.0 yet. 
Item System 2.0. This allows that for all items in the game to be treated in a similar way with sizes, hard points, requirements for use, and various other parameters which govern exactly how items function and what they can interact with and what can interact with them. For ship components, that means items can communicate with each other. Coolers will take heat from weapons. Power plants will provide um, power to systems. Item 2.0 will open up a huge amount of customization for our ships uh, when choosing components and weapons, but everything that is usable or is an item and um, is part of the system, down to the clothing on your character. Alpha 3.0 plans to have a few things fully ready for items 2.0 and refactored. Um, operator seats, radar system, um, light control system, fueling and refueling, uh, power supply and pipes, pipes carry um, power around to various components, quantum drives, uh, in addition to a revamp of power plants, shield generators, coolers, and the heat and power systems, along with the added gameplay and interaction of being able to switch um, out to more components and change stuff around, we'll also be seeing more meaningful choices in loadouts with a load of new ship components coming into the game. Object containers and mega maps. So this is a major part of the whole 3.0 branch. The PU has been smashed to pieces and converted to the object container setup. This conversion also is an important part of the mega map, meaning minimal preloads when you go into the game. Um, so object container streaming allows for items that you need and ships and, and areas that you need to be loaded in without this preload and it just loads in what you need and then effectively gets rid of what you don't. With the transition to object containers, the Crusader map was completely redesigned. Each point of interest is now an object container laid out by the solar system editor. This is in preparation for object container streaming and seamless transitions from different points of interest and between star systems. Um, so mission flow graphs are converted over to use subsumption and the new mission system too. And we'll talk a little bit about subsumption in a second. Actually, let's talk about it now. Uh, missions and map stuff. So the new mission system in 3.0 is combined with subsumption in its very base form. Subsumption drives all of the AI, uh, mission, dynamic content and conversation logic. Mission-wise, this means that we're gonna have uh, missions from uh, patrols, assassinations, cargo, smuggling, exploration, escorts, where some of these missions will be check your mobile glass to receive or go to a mission board um, or find a pad to interact with. Some will be hero missions from mission givers like uh, Miles Eckhart or Ruto, um, the new mission giver. But these missions should also have some dynamic and random elements to them each time too, driven by this um, subsumption stuff. The solar system mission service di dictates what missions are being offered at various locations and at what price. It's also responsible for specifying where dynamic content should be used and how it should be customized. Um, there's going to be some MobiGlass apps as well to support the new missions and stuff as well. So they're going to be uh, a system uh, map allowing you to see the PU at large, but also to collect points of interest to quantum travel to. There's going to be a mission board app allowing you to see service beacons um, that are set up around the universe by players or NPCs calling for assistance or missions or what have you. Um, there's a redesign of the current mission manager app giving players more control over their mission tracking. Also, if you even if you want to make your own story seeking emergent gameplay or just running cargo, the AI may generate challenging encounters for you on the fly. That's the idea of this system. Shopping and cargo. There is an expanded shopping and trade system with cargo and various commodities, which can be purchased via kiosks and then sold at other kiosks. This is one of the reasons that players might want to turn to piracy, stealing some of these items. But after buying items at a kiosk, players will head to their ship, check their cargo manifest. Players will be able to check their personal infantries too, um, as well as uh, full UIs for, for those systems that will be implemented in 3.0. There are going to be a lot of updates to um, apps of the MobiGlass, allowing ease of access to these functions. As I stated earlier, the solar system shop service di dictates what products um, will retail at certain areas, what natural resources are available, and service that services that a shop will be willing to buy and sell. It's also going to dictate their level of inventory and prices, which may vary over time. Players will also be able to manually interact with their cargo, load and unload it, as well as sell it to specific NPCs. And although not confirmed on the schedule report, I suspect with the expanded shopping system that we're going to see the ability to purchase ships with 
Alpha UEC, as well as a huge amount of weapons and equipment for both first person shooter and ships as well. There's a few new confirmed vehicles and ships in 3.0 as well. The Drake Dragonfly for both space flight and on ground combat exploration stuff. Uh, the long awaited Cutlass Black rework is also in. The Constellation Aquila exploration variant of the Connie. And the RSI Urza Rover, which is the ground exploration vehicle. And the Misk Prospector single seat mining ship. They're all in. 3.0, but we might see some others as well um, if they get some sneaky, sneaky ships in. Um, FPS gear. We should see some various items, weapons, and equipment turn up for both ship and FPS play, but they have confirmed a rework of the current FPS weapons as well as additions in the form of the Apocalypse Arms Scourge Railgun, which is a so shoulder-mounted railgun um, capable of high levels of damage at long range. The Bearing P8SC, which is a uh, mid-range SMG, um, as well as um, um, some new heavy marine armor and the explorer suit armor as well. Now we might see lots of other bits and bobs as well in there. I suspect we will. Item system 2.0 also affects characters in 3.0 and we should have a large amount of customization over our loadouts, possibly down to even the scopes and sights on barrels uh, and stocks of our guns uh, if it's ready in time. But we are going to see inventory management in 3.0 um, helping us um, decide our loadouts for our characters on the fly in the PU. There's some other mechanics as well that they put in, which I'll describe briefly. Stamina is going to be in 3.0. This means that our actions are going to have consequences. Um, continuing to sprint will drain your character's stamina, causing you to lose breath or have difficulty aiming a weapon. It also may prevent you from mantling or vaulting over, to, over obstacles if you are wearing too much um, gear or if you are too exhausted. An alpha version of the insurance system for ships will also be implemented. If your current ship becomes damaged beyond repair or destroyed, you're going to have to request a replacement with a basic loadout from your insurance provider. We don't know exactly how that insurance system is going to work in its first iteration, but the um, it, it should help drive the economy and it should help remind you to get insurance, which should be available for a minimal amount of alpha UEC in the game. Deeper persistence. This ensures that your vehicle's state is saved between sessions from the damage um, that it's taken to cargo and ammo, as well as looking at expanding the current subsistence that we currently have. AI will be able to operate turrets in the Persistent Universe as well now. Um, it's going to be able to track and fire upon the correct targets, but they're also improving player manned turrets too. We're going to have an FOV slider allowing players to narrow or widen their field of view to their liking um, and lots of systems in place for the UI so that it doesn't um, look odd on your HUD or on the screen. They are also getting some of the room system functionality in, in the form of improved airlocks and doors. So the room system governs pressure, composition of air in areas and um, uh, the kind of uh, difference between them. Uh, is there oxygen in the air? Is there environmental hazards? What's the difference between pressure between two doors? And if they open up, what happens? Uh, the first iteration of this in 3.0 will allow airlocks to know if a room beyond is depressurized and then stay shut for safety. Performance and improvements. There are a huge amount of Im performance improvements on paper, though we do need to get our hands on a patch before we can actually make an informed decision, but let's go over a few of them now. Render target refactor saves over 50% of video memory usage. There's more efficient planetary scale shadows. Um, they've got new light controllers making thousands of light entities into hundreds. They've optimized vertex and position format for all geometry. They've massively improved LODs, computation, and average face sizes for ships. They've got better render and item culling, and they've implemented version 2 of their human skin shader, which further optimizes memory usage. There are huge and huge amounts of improvements that should make it into Star Citizen and make it more accessible for players' PCs to enjoy. There's also some cooler extra features like volumetric fog, better FX, rendering to texture, enabling less pre-rendering and saving hard drive space, and vehicles no longer use Lua anymore, which is a huge step forward for the code side. But I suppose one of the more major performance gains we're going to see is with networking improvements. And with that in mind, we've got the new message queue, uh, allowing the game to send and receive messages with less overhead. The new message queue will allow for a few extra feature features to handle packet loss and jitter better, helping reduce average bandwidth and latency. We're going to have physics serialization, fixing a few long-standing threading issues between network and physics code, and improving separation of physics and network for better maintainability. Uh, Entity Update Component Scheduler. This will allow entities further away or less important to the player to be updated less frequently, which should improve our overall frame rates and allow us to add 
all of them to add even more content to the universe. As a stretch goal, also bind um, and unbind network. This eliminates network updates for entities altogether uh, far away from the clients, which should greatly reduce the amount of netcode um, stuff that the netcode has to do, uh, improving server performance. The entity owner manager as well will track entities that are moved around the universe, making sure that they despawn and spawn them at correct times based on the priority and how important those items are. If you leave a gun on a planet, it might despawn relatively quickly. But if you leave a ship there, it might take a lot longer. Um, mining. So mining is being worked on um, as uh, for mineable asteroids and mining on planets, but it wasn't listed in the schedules as they have no firm date for it yet. It may well be a feature that makes it into 3.0, 3.1 or 3.2. So, isn't this effectively 2.7? We talked about a 2.7 patch a little while ago to bridge um, the 2.6 and 3.0 patch with some of the features that they wanted for the big 3.0 drop. And this 3.0 that is scheduled is pretty similar to what we discussed. It's a 3.0 light, but it's important to remember that some of these additions are so dramatic drastic and fundamentally change the persistent universe that it's unfair to call it anything but 3.0. 2.6 focused on Star Marine and Arena Commander, but 3.0 focuses on the persistent universe and represents a giant, giant jump in gameplay potential from the code um, in the 2.6 branch. Um, it contains nine months of their main development branch beyond 2.6, uh, as well as almost two years of planetary tech development that we've seen so far. We have to wait and see it for the exact level of persistence and exactly how this all feels once it's in game in 3.0, as well as how interactive item system 2.0 makes cockpits, ships and choices. Patches 3.1 and 3.2 are scheduled with a possibility of being released in 2017. Release dates, though, I suspect that 3.2 is quite aspirational um, as, a, as a release in 2017, but we'll have to wait and see. We shall cover all of that in another video, though. 3.1, 3.2 and beyond 3.0, effectively, very, very shortly. Every month you have a chance to win a ship from my channel by being subscribed and commenting one of my videos from Star Citizen that month. For April, that is a Drake Buccaneer ship that you could win. So tell me, are you excited about 3.0? Are you disappointed about anything that's not being included about in 3.0? Do you think we're gonna get any extra sneaky ships or features added? If you have any questions for me or the devs at BrizzenCon, please drop them below as well. Uh, I am gonna be going to BrizzenCon starting on Friday, um, uh, the 21st for a Bar Citizen, and then the 22nd is uh, going to be prison con with a bar citizen again afterwards so hopefully i will see you down there in manchester and winslow uh, please remember to like and subscribe for more star citizen news and info it really does help me and i will see you in the verse